Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In the matchless name of Yahoshua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This has come out of her, my people broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that verse is being fulfilled in your very ears on this day. Now, I want to warn you, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart. We bring the truth raw and uncut. If you love truth, if you love truth raw and uncut, this broadcast is tell it made for you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we don't beat around the bushes. We don't tiptoe through the tulips, but we let the chips fall where they may. And we do not apologize for declaring the truth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get right into our message on this day. Have you ever wondered why Apostle Paul was a Hebrew Israelite, but his teachings were extremely different from Hebrew Israelites today. No one can refute the fact that Apostle Paul was a bona fide Hebrew Israelite. He gave his pedigree in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 5. He wrote, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. Romans 9, verses 3 through 4, Apostle Paul wrote, For I could wish that myself were a curse from Mashiach, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Elohim and the promises. Addition to that, Apostle Paul wrote in Galatians 1 verses 13 through 14, For you have heard of my conversation in times past in the Jews' religion, how that Beyond measure, I persecuted the church of Elohim and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. There are Hebrew Israelite camps that teach that Apostle Paul was an imposter and a heretic, and they have rejected all of Apostle Paul's writings. Then there are Hebrew Israelite camps today that reject, ladies and gentlemen, all of the New Testament writings. But in all actuality, they are heretics to reject any of the New Testament writings, anyone that rejects any of the New Testament writings, they are a heretic. The reason why there are Hebrew Israelite camps that reject Apostle Paul's writings because his writings contradict their theology, philosophy, philosophy, ideology, and train of thought. Apostle Paul was just a deep and heavy brother. He was so deep that the apostle Peter had to acknowledge his revelations of the scriptures. Second Peter chapter three, verses 15 through 16, apostle Peter wrote, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable, rest or twist, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Those who reject Apostle Paul's writings 
must also reject Apostle Peter's writings because Apostle Peter spoke highly and endorsed Apostle Paul's writings. A person must be spirit filled to grasp Apostle Paul's writings. Apostle Peter wrote that some things Apostle Paul wrote was hard to be understood, which those who are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Apostle Paul humbly wrote of the abundance of revelations that Yahweh gave him. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, Apostle Paul wrote, At least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, least I should be exalted above measure. Apostle Paul was given a thorn in his flesh, a messenger of Satan, ladies and gentlemen, to buffet him, ladies and gentlemen, that he would not be exalted above measure. Apostle Paul was too deep for most Hebrew Israelite camps today. And some reject Apostle Paul's writings because they don't fit their ideology and religion they have created. Some of Apostle Paul's close companions were Gentiles, Timothy, Titus, Luke, uh, Crescent, Carpus, Aratus, uh, Trophimus, many more, ladies and gentlemen, etc. They were all Gentile believers. You won't get many Hebrew Israelites today to hang out with Gentiles. However, Apostle Paul was a Hebrew Israelite, but his close companions and associates were Gentiles. Apostle Paul made some statements that were not compatible with the law. For an example, Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 7 verses 18 through 19, Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any call in uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. Now listen what Apostle Paul said. I know this gets on the the skin of a lot of Hebrew Israelites today, ladies and gentlemen, because it doesn't fit in their ideology, ladies and gentlemen. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but the keeping of the commandments of Elohim. Circumcision, Apostle Paul said, is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing but keeping the commandments of Elohim. It's nothing. You know what nothing means, ladies and gentlemen? It doesn't mount up to anything. This is why Apostle Peter wrote that some things Apostle Paul wrote were hard to be understood, which those who were unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. People, amen, need to be spirit-filled. They need the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, I have not seen, neither have ever heard, neither enter into the hearts the things that Yahweh has prepared for them that love him, but he has revealed them to us by his Spirit. And the Spirit searches the deep things of Elohim, yea, the deep things things of Elohim. And then in verse 14, it tells us the natural man received not the spirit, uh, received not the things of the spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can they know them because they are spiritually discerned. A natural man is a carnal, or earthly man that has not the spirit of Yahweh. A person that don't have the spirit of Yahweh, they cannot, ladies and gentlemen, 
uh, receive the teachings of the, the Apostle Paul. Now, Hebrew Israelites today, they don't teach that a person need to be born again of the water and of the spirit. A Hebrew Israelites camps, many of them don't believe in water baptism in the name of Yahoshua Mashiach and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, salvation, ladies and gentlemen, we can find in the book of Acts. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost, uh, Peter preached his first message, ladies and gentlemen, and the people was convicted Amen. As he concluded his message and um, Acts chapter two, verse 37, the scripture says they said men and brethren, they were talking to the apostles, men and brethren, what must we do? They wanted to know how to be saved. What must we do? Then Peter told them. In Acts 2 and 38, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahoshua Mashiach for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is unto you and to your children to all that are fall even as many as Yahweh Elohim shall call. Many Hebrew Israelite camps today believe that the things, the writings in the scripture only pertain to Gentiles and not them, ladies and gentlemen. It only pertained to other people, but it did not pertain to them. Yahoshua was a Hebrew Israelite, ladies and gentlemen, and he taught, glory to Yahweh, that except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Elohim. Except a man is born again of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of Elohim. Then he said, that which is born of flesh is flesh, but that is that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. Then he said in verse 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth, thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell us whence it cometh or whether it goeth. So is everyone that's born of the spirit. So most Hebrew Israelite camps, they don't preach water baptism, baptism of the water, baptism of the spirit, of the, except the man is born again of the water and of the spirit. They don't teach this and they don't teach the baptism of the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. And this is why many Hebrew Israelite camps today are blind to the truth. They, they, they don't have the revelation, the understanding, ladies and gentlemen, and many of them are getting into doctrines of devils. The Bible says in the book of uh, um, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Ladies and gentlemen, um, many Hebrew Israelite camps, ladies and gentlemen, they teach polygamy. Uh, some say polygamy, ladies and gentlemen, they, they condone polygamy, multiple wives. A man can have uh, multiple wives. That, that's not scripture, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. And, and, and they get involved in any in other thing. A lot of them drink hard alcohol, liquor, ladies and gentlemen. They drink beer and all these other things. They use profanity. They say the ask word. They say the uh, four letter words, ladies and gentlemen. And so the Bible teaches us to be holy in our whole manner of conversation, ladies and gentlemen. We got to be holy in our, 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 our language, uh, our, not only our mannerism, our conduct, our behavior, but our verbiage, ladies and gentlemen. We must be holy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is why Apostle Paul wrote, uh, Apostle Peter wrote that some things Apostle Paul wrote were hard to be understood, which those who were unlearned, for those who were unlearned and unstable, rats or twists, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. And, and I fault the Hebrew Israelites for this because they 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 their ideology uh, their theology ladies and gentlemen uh they 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 believe a certain way and so they tried to take the scriptures 
scriptures to fit into their ideology, ladies and gentlemen. It just don't add up. It don't add up. We need to teach the scriptures for face value for what they are saying, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. But if we we create a religion, we have a, a ideology, we, we have to twist the scriptures to fit, ladies and gentlemen, in a man that box. Glory to Yahweh. Apostle Paul wrote in Galatians 5 and 6, For in Yahushua Mashiach, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Galatians 6 and 15. Now, I'm showing you why many, amen, Hebrew Israelite camps, they don't um, heed to Paul's writings. Uh, they say that Paul was an heretic and an imposter. He was a false prophet, and we shouldn't listen to his teachings because his teachings contradict their ideology. It don't fit in their box, ladies and gentlemen. Galate, now, he, the Apostle Paul was a Hebrew Israelite, and we know he was a, a Hebrew Israelite, a bona fide Hebrew Israelite. He was a Pharisee. Gentiles could not be a Pharisee. He sat under, under the feet of Gamaliel, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. Galatians 6 and 15, Apostle Paul wrote, For in Mashiach Yahoshua, neither circumcision of Velas anything, nor circumcision, but a new creature. Remember, Apostle Paul was a Hebrew Israelite. He said he was. This is why many Hebrew Israelite camps cannot handle Apostle Paul, and some don't understand him. But they miserably, ladies and gentlemen, receive him. Apostle Paul drives many Hebrew Israelites crazy by his writings. Let me say that again. Apostle Paul drives many Hebrew Israelites crazy by his writings. Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 2 verses 28 through 29, for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, well, he's not a Jew, or well, or he's not an Israelite, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Even the circumcision in the flesh is nothing. But he is a Jew or Israelite or Hebrew, which is one inwardly. This is an inwardly thing. And circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not in the letter, not in the Torah, whose praise is not of men, but of Elohim. Ladies and gentlemen, glory to Yahweh. Therefore, the apostle Paul declared that a Israelite can be a Gentile if he have been circumcised in the heart and the spirit. He is an Israelite, which is one in relief. See, when a person gets saved, ladies and gentlemen, they get born again of the water and of the spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes in their life, there's an operation that takes place. There's a circumcision, amen, that takes place on their heart. Yahweh removes the, the, the foreskin off their heart, and he removes the foreskin from their spirit, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, the Apostle Paul declared that an Israelite can be a Gentile if he have been circumcised in the heart and the spirit. He is an Israelite, which is one inwardly. Apostle Paul really broke it down in the book of Galatians. I know this may be driving a lot of people crazy that will listen to this broadcast. And I believe I will receive, I may I lose some subscribers from this broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. I may lose some subscribers. Amen. Apostle Paul wrote in Galatians 3, 7 through 9, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham, whether a Israelite or a Gentile. Remember, Abraham was a Hebrew. 
And the Gentiles that are of faith, they are Abraham's children. That makes them spiritual Hebrews. Verse 8, and the scripture foreseeing that Elohim would justify the heathen, the heathen, the Gentile, through faith. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. Even Edomites, if they repent and get born again. Even an Edomite, ladies and gentlemen, glory to Yahweh. Yahweh said, uh, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. But even an Edomite, if an Edomite repent, and embrace the gospel, the Edomite can be saved. Well, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if any man be in Mashiach, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So if an Edomite repent, glory to Yahweh, amen, and, and receive the gospel, embrace the gospel, and he's born again, regenerated, he is a new creature. Cornelius was a Roman Edomite. Remember the book of Jasher tells us that Kittim, which is Rome, and the Edomites became one people. Kittim is ancient Rome. Cornelius and his whole household got saved. We can find this account in Acts chapter 10. An Edomite and his whole family got saved, ladies and gentlemen. The Edomites and the Romans kicked them, and the Edom became one people. Amen. They assimilated a man with one another. Now, Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 35, Apostle Peter declared, then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that Elohim is no respecter of person. Listen to this. This is a doozy here. But in every nation, not some, in every nation, he that fears him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. If Yahweh can find someone out of any nation, it doesn't matter that that. Uh, fears him and work his righteousness, that individual will be accepted, amen, with him, ladies and gentlemen. Bless Yahweh, amen, for the truth. Galatians 3 and 9, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Now, the scripture tells us, Yahweh told Abraham, in thy seed, all the families, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in you, Abraham, through your seed. That seed, Paul broke it down, is the Messiah, Yahushua, the ultimate Hebrew Israelite, the line from the tribe of Jacob, ladies and gentlemen. Praise the name of Yahweh, the rooted offspring of David. Galatians 3 verses 26 through 29, Apostle Paul wrote, for ye are all the children of Elohim, Jew and Gentile, Israelite and Gentile, by faith and Mashiach, Yahoshua. For as many of you as have been baptized, there go again, into Mashiach have put on Mashiach. Yahushua said, except the man is born again of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of Elohim. Scriptures say, by one spirit are we baptized into one body. It ain't a body for the Gentile and a body for the Israelites. Ladies and gentlemen, there's one body. We're one. Neither is there Neither is ne there is neither rather Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For we are all one in Mashiach Yahushua. We're all Abraham's children. We're all Abraham's children. Uh, um, uh, whether you 
uh, a Gentile, whether you're Jew, whether you're Greek, you're born or free, free or female or male, we are all Abraham's children, those that have been born again. And if you be Mashiach, then are you Abraham's seed? Look at that. Look at that. And if you be Mashiach, and if ye be Mashiach, then are ye Abraham seed and heirs according to the promise. Look at that. We all. Therefore, if a Gentile has been regenerated or born again by water, baptism, and Yahoshua Mashiach's name, and has received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongue, they are the children and seed of Abraham through faith. Now, I talked to some Hebrew Israelite camps that teach, ladies and gentlemen, that when the Bible speaks of Gentiles, amen, these were Israelites of the the lost tribes of the, the, the ten kingdoms, ladies and gentlemen, and they were Gentiles, so they were called Gentiles. That's not true. That's not true, ladies and gentlemen. That, see, I tr they tried to to they, they 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 their ideology they tried to fit it ladies and gentlemen their belief they tried to fit it into a man a, a certain box ladies and gentlemen they created their own religion and they don't go outside of that so it, it, they get scriptures to fit they'll twist them to fit into their ideology ladies and gentlemen so the scripture said, therefore, if a Gentile has been regenerated or born again by water baptism in Yahoshua Mashiach's name and has received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they are the children and seed of Abraham through faith. And now Gentiles and Hebrew Israelites can be one. They can be equal. We're equal. Amen. Uh, Hebrew Israelite believers and Gentile believers are equal. Not, one is not better than the other, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, a Hebrew Israelite is not above a true Gentile believer. They are equal. They are one. One is not better than the other. So a Gentile believer can teach a Hebrew Israelite. He can be over a Hebrew Israelite camp, a Gentile. I'm, I'm giving you Bible, ladies and gentlemen. There was no discrimination to be between Gentiles and Hebrew, is, and Hebrew Israelites in the primitive church. There was no discrimination, ladies and gentlemen. No, no segregation, amen, between them. There wasn't one like they do today in, 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 in Christianity. It wasn't like that in the in the uh the primitive church ladies and gentlemen it wasn't like that at all apostle paul wrote in ephesians 2 verses 11 through 19 wherefore remember that ye being in times past gentiles now he's writing to the church at ephesus he's writing to the gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision or the Israelites in the flesh made by hands. That at that time you were without Mashiach being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without Elohim in the world at one time these Gentiles. That's what Paul is writing to. But now in Mashiach, Yahoshua, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Mashiach. For he is our peace who have made both one and have broken down, listen, the middle wall of petition between us. There was a petition between the Gentiles and the Hebrew Israelites. 
Glory to Yahweh. Yahoshua broke that petition, that wall down, that barrier. He removed the veil. He removed the veil. He, he tore, amen, the veil, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. So, for he is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of petition between us. Now the veil is rent. And the first century church, Hebrew Israelites and Gentiles worship together in the same assembly because they knew that they were one. There was no difference between them. Verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain or two one new man so making peace. So this is how Yahweh views believers. If you have a Gentile believer and a Hebrew Israelite believer, he see them as one, as the same. You don't differentiate them from one another. Now, the Hebrews that receive Yahoshua Mashiach, he does not, amen, distinguish them from one another. When he see a Hebrew Israelite believer, when he see a Gentile believer, Yahweh see them as the same. No difference. Apostle Paul is not saying here that Gentiles... Let me read verse 15 again. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinance for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Apostle Paul is not saying here that Gentiles don't have to observe the fourth commandment to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Nor was Apostle Paul saying that Gentiles don't have to observe the dietary law. These are universal laws and commandments for both Israelites and Gentiles. We can see in the book of Acts, ladies and gentlemen, the history of the church, the, the birth of the church in the book of Acts on the assembly. We can see that Gentiles and Hebrew Israelites worship together in synagogues on the Sabbath. And when they was thrown out the synagogue, we see that the Gentiles will continue, amen, to worship on the seventh day Sabbath. They observe the seventh day Sabbath. Read uh, the book of Acts chapter 16. You will see this, ladies and gentlemen. Mark chapter 2 and verse 27 declares, and, and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Man here is making reference to all of humanity, not just the Israelite man and woman, but for the Gentile man and woman also. Ephesians 2 verses 16 through 19, and that he might reconcile both unto Elohim in one body by the tree having slain the enmity thereby, ladies and gentlemen, and came and preached peace to you which were far off. The heathens, the Gentiles were far off and to them that were nigh. Also to the Israelites, ladies and gentlemen. He preached to both. The Bible says in the book of First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Elohim was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up unto glory. For though, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. The Hebrew Israelite believer and the Gentile believer, ladies and gentlemen, we both have access by one spirit hmm, to the Father. 
Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers. We're no more strangers and foreigners, We're not foreigners anymore, but fellow citizens. We have our citizenship now to the kingdom of heaven. We have our uh, fellowship, amen, to the kingdom of heaven with the saints and of the household of Elohim. Now we can see why many Hebrew Israelite camps today cannot receive Apostle Paul and his writings. Why isn't the Hebrew Israelites today not trying to reach non-Israelites? Because there is no difference between, ladies and gentlemen, and Hebrew Israelite believer and a Gentile believer. The only difference is their flesh, is their biological makeup. That's the only difference. Nothing else, ladies and gentlemen. In Romans 7 and 18, Apostle Paul wrote, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So if you are a Hebrew Israelite, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> That doesn't justify anything. That don't make you better than a Gentile believer. In, in our flesh, dwell is no good thing. There's nothing good about your flesh. Paul wrote, for I know that in me that is in my flesh, dwell is no good thing. There's nothing good about your genetic makeup, your biological makeup. If you're a Hebrew Israelite or if you're not, it doesn't. Amen. Hey Amen. Yahweh don't see you no different than that Gentile believer or you, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness. Praise Yahweh for the truth. There is nothing good about Hebrew Israelite flesh, nor is there anything good about Gentile flesh. Salvation is inward, not outward in the flesh. Hey Amen. Salvation, hey amen, is an inward. Amen. Reality. It's an inward thing. It starts in the inside, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. And it's, it becomes an outward reality, ladies and gentlemen. You look at a person, you know they're saved. Scripture says, such were some of you, but you've been washed, you've been justified, you've been sanctified in the name of of our Elohim and by the spirit of our Elohim, ladies and gentlemen. Praise Yahweh. Amen. Such were some of you. You used to be fornicators, adulterers, idolaters, homosexuals, lesbians, thieves, extortioners, liars, cheaters, gamblers, extortioners. Glory to Yahweh. Revilers. We used to be like that, but now we're not drunkards. We used to be like that, but not any longer. Glory to Yahweh. Praise his holy name. John 6 and 63, the Messiah declared that the flesh profits nothing. Man look is on the outward appearance, but Yahweh look on the heart. Flesh don't mean nothing to Yahweh in this dispensation. <coughs> Did you hear me? Flesh doesn't mean anything to Yahweh in this dispensation. I know I'm making some people angry. I know this word is getting up under your skin, but you know what? I got backing. I got what Apostle Paul taught us, ladies and gentlemen. And Apostle Paul was not an heretic. Apostle Paul was not a false prophet. Neither was he an imposter, ladies and gentlemen. He was a Hebrew Israelite, a bona fide, and a bona fide one. And he rightly divided the word of truth. He didn't do it like the Hebrew Israelites today are. They're not rightly dividing the truth. I'm so grateful that the Hebrew Israelites have left Christianity. That's a blessing. But because you left Christianity, that doesn't give us a right, amen, to go a man in left field, ladies and gentlemen, with false teachings. Circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not a man, but of Elohim. Now, women and girls can be circumcised, ladies and gentlemen, today. Under the law, circumcision was only a man for males and not females. But now women can be circumcised. How? Inwardly, 
their, their, their heart and their spirit can be circumcised through salvation. Romans 9 verses 7 through 8, Apostle Paul wrote, Neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children? Look at that. Because they're the seed of Abraham, they're not all children. Every Hebrew Israelite is not a child of Yahweh, he ain't been chosen. They're not chosen. Because if you are a Hebrew Israelite, a true Hebrew Israelite, listen, listen to me and listen to me carefully. That doesn't mean you, you, you are a child. You are children. Amen. You may be the sea, but we have to be his children, ladies and gentlemen. Apostle Paul wrote, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac, listen, shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of Elohim. These are not the children of Elohim. What Paul is saying, because in Paul's day, the majority of Israelites rejected the gospel. They rejected the truth, ladies and gentlemen. And Paul's saying, these people are not the children of Elohim after the flesh. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, the children of the flesh, the majority of the children of the flesh, these are not the children of Elohim. They are not the children. Look, who put Yahoshua on that tree? Who nailed him to that tree? Ladies and gentlemen, who, where did Yahoshua get his wounds from? Where did Yahweh, Yahoshua get most of his problems from, his difficulty from? Hebrew Israelites. Ladies and gentlemen, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many received him to them became the sons of Elohim. He was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. It was his own people, his own people that nailed him on that tree, ladies and gentlemen. It was his, the Hebrew Israelites gave him most of his problems. Look at the apostles. Where did their persecution come? Where did Yahushua persecution come from? Hebrew Israelites? Huh? It wasn't the Romans, ladies and gentlemen. It was the Hebrew Israelites, them the ones that came, the chief priests, huh? the high priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the lawyers. These were the people that tried to destroy Yahoshua and the apostles. They command them not to preach or teach in the name of Yahoshua Mashiach, ladies and gentlemen. They received their wounds in the house of their friends. You're going to receive most of your wounds from your immediate family members. You're going to receive most of your wounds from your own people. Your own people is going to, amen, persecute you more than anybody. Nobody can persecute you more or hate you more than your own, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. Amen for the truth. That is they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of Elohim, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The Gentiles are the children of the promise. There are some, some Jews, amen, Israelites at this time when Paul wrote, they were children of the promise, but not many. Most of the Israelites, amen, rejected the gospel in the Apostle Paul's day. John 8, verses 37 through 39, as we close, these Israelites, we see, were Abraham's seed, but not Abraham's children. Can I read it to you? Look at John, the book of John, chapter number 8, ladies and gentlemen, and I want to draw your attention to verse 37. Listen to this, listen to this. You, we see that Yahushua received most of his persecution from his own people, Hebrew Israelites. Huh? He was hated without a cause from these people. Now listen what it says. 
I know that ye are Abraham's seed. He's talking to the Hebrew Israelite. I know you're Abraham's seed. Biologically, genetically, you're Abraham's seed. You are descendants of Abraham. Abraham is your ancestor. But ye seek to kill me because my word have no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen with your father, Satan. He called him, he said, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you would do. He told him you was of the devil, just like uh, Cain. Cain was of the wicked one. He slew his brother. He was of the wicked one. He was of the devil too, because of their works, their works. Ladies and gentlemen, no, I don't believe that the serpent and Eve had sex and produced Cain. But he was metaphorically, spiritually, ladies and gentlemen, he was of the wicked one. And these Jews here are of the uh, Israelites here are of the wicked one. Look what he said in verse 38. I speak that which I have seen with my father and you do that which you have seen with your father, the devil. Then answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Yahushua said unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, oh, you his seed, but if you was his children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Other words, they was bastards, illegitimate. They were not the children of Abraham because they did not do the works of Abraham. Listen, if you are a Hebrew Israelite, genetically, biologically, if you don't do the works of Abraham, you are of the devil. You are a child of the devil. Yahoshua said this, my mother my brother and my sister are they to do the will of my father which is in heaven. Did you hear me? Listen, whether you are Israelite or Hebrew Israelite or you are bona fide Gentile. Listen, if you do the will of the father which is in heaven, you are Yahoshua, he's a Hebrew Israelite. Yahoshua, you know he's a Hebrew Israelite. Uh, we can't deny that fact. You are a Hebrew Israelite. You know why? Because you're part of his family now. You, amen, because you do the will of the Father which is in heaven. He said, my mother, my brother, my sister, are they to do the will of my Father which is in heaven? heaven. If you do the will of the Father in heaven, you are a bona fide Hebrew Israelite. If you are Gentile or if you are Hebrew Israelite after the flesh. Well, we thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. We would appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. Also, write your comments. We like to hear your thoughts, like to hear from you. Hey, Amen. We love to um, correspond and interact, amen, with our followers. Amen. Let us know what you think about this broadcast. It's really encouraging when you write those comments and, and, and let us know that you're being blessed. If you're being blessed by this, this ministry, this broadcast, uh, these videos, let us know. Don't just be listening to us and then you don't even put a, a, a write a line or two every once in a while and let, let us know that you, you, you there, you're listening. Glory to Yahweh. Amen. So we thank Yahweh. Amen for that. Amen. If you would like to send donations to this ministry, you want to help us out, ladies and gentlemen, you can. And our monies that we receive from our friends go right back into the ministry that the word of Yahweh may be glorified. Listen, I live in um, in Africa. I left Babylon slash United States of America. The Bible told us to come physically out of 
the United States of America, Babylon, ladies and gentlemen. And there are people that write me and they desire to leave Babylon, but they don't have the finances to do it. I have people that 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 want to be here so bad. Hey, Amen. They want to be that. I mean, they will be here in a New York minute if they could, ladies and gentlemen. Praise the name of Yahweh. But we don't have the finances now. If you're listening to me and you want to be a blessing to this ministry and help us, amen, get the monies that we can begin to bring people here to help them uh, uh, build houses, get land for they can come, amen, to be amongst the saints of Yahweh. Not a commune. I'm not saying a commune. No, we're not doing no Jim Jones situation. No, that's not what we're talking about. Glory. No David Koresh, no uh, R.G. Stair or William Dow uh, or uh, Charles Dow. No, we're not talking about that, ladies and gentlemen. Praise his holy name. But we are, amen, if you can help, there's people dying to get here. If you, some, some out there, you may have the finances that you can send and support our efforts that we can get them here, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. You might want to be a blessing, amen, to us that we can get the people here. They're dying. We have families dying to come here, amen. You can help us begin to bring some of Yahweh's people, his remnant, his elect, so they can leave Babylon because Babylon is going to be judged. It's going to be destroyed very very soon. Well, we thank Yahweh for you. Well, until next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you is our prayers. Peace and blessings. Shalom. Shalom.